Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Cardboard Dragon Reviews, the video review series designed to teach you a board game as if you're sitting at the table with me, as well as to provide a review on that game in hopes of helping you decide if that game is right for you. Today we are taking a look at The Hare and the Tortoise, which is a game for 2-5 to five players, recommended for ages 7 and up, and it takes about 20 minutes to play. This is a card game in which... We have secret bets placed on one of these five animals in hopes of having them win the race or at least place on the podium, which will score us points. And using these cards, we're going to manipulate which animals get to move and how fast they get to move and which ones might have to stay still for a turn. So let's go ahead and teach you how to play the hare and the tortoise. Okay, so just a couple things we need to do to set up the game. The first is we need to build the board here. And in order to do this, uh, we just take all the tiles and we set them out randomly. None of the tiles do anything and have any bearing on the gameplay except for the two stream tiles. But you set this out however you want. If you want to make a loop, you do however you want to do it. Just as long as there's a start end and a finish end. At this point, we need to get these five cards which look like they have little dragon balls on the back of them but these five cards represent the five animals that are in the game one animal per each card we deal these out in secret to the players one each and set aside any extra without looking at them this designates uh, an animal that you have a bet on during the race uh, but in a two-player game, I should mention, you get two of these cards instead of just one. And you need to keep that secret. Now we need to deal out seven cards to each player from this deck. So just as an example, I'll show you a few of them. They're all very similar. There's just four of them as an example. Each card shows one of the animals. Um, <clears throat> and from your hand of seven, you need to pick one card. And you need to put it with your secret bet card, your uh, white card here, also in secret. So you're taking one of the seven, and that's another animal that you're putting a bet on. If you want, you can choose the same animal again, and essentially that means you're doubling down on that animal. So you just place it secretly with your secret bet card, and then you will have a hand of six cards. Okay, so how do we play this game? So we need to decide a start player for the round, and they, they get this time clock token. Now each player will have their hand of six cards, and when it comes your time to play, you need to lay down between zero or sorry between one and four cards, all of one animal type. So if it was my turn right now and there were no cards laid down, I could lay down four of these lamb cards. I could also lay down one of them or two or three of them. The rules with laying down cards are you can only do one animal type per turn but also you can never lay down uh, cards that will bring the total amount on the table past eight cards or you can't lay down cards that will bring the total number, number of a single animal past four cards. So for example, if it was my turn and these were on the table, I would only be able to play one more lamb. Even if I had four lambs in my hand, I could only play one lamb because there are already three on the table and the max there can be on the table is four. Additionally, if this was what was on the table, I could only play three cards and only one of them could, only one lamb, but I could only play three cards total because there are five on the table and we can only have a max of eight. So when you're playing cards, you're putting them in the middle of the table with everybody else's. Okay, so when you hit a point where there are four of a kind of an animal or you've hit eight cards, that triggers the end of the card playing round and we get into movement. Then you will also take this token, the first player, and you'll pass it to the player on your left. So the way animals move is dependent on how many cards are played for each of them. 
typically. So you have these handy dandy reference guides you'll give to each player. And it tells you how many cards uh, are of each animal in the deck. And it also shows you the order in which they move. They will always move the hare, then the tortoise, then the wolf, then the fox, then the lamb. So if, for instance, the hare and the tortoise could both cross the finish line at the same time, the hare would win because he gets to move first according to the rules sheet. So there are enough of these to, uh, player aids to give to each player. So you definitely want to do that. So how does movement work? So let's start with the hare. So you look at all of the eight cards or less that were played for each character and you go down the list, starting with the hare. How many cards are out here for the hare? Well, there's one. So if there are one to four cards played for the hare, he moves two spaces, so two tiles. Except if there are four cards played for him and he is currently in first place, or tied for first place, not including the starting area though, he gets lazy and doesn't move at all, just like in the story. He gets cocky, okay? Then we have the tortoise. Now, the tortoise is special in that the tortoise will almost always move. With zero to three cards played for the tortoise, he moves one space. So even if nobody plays any tortoise cards, he will usually move. There's one exception that will stop everybody from moving, and I'll talk about that later. If there are four cards played for the tortoise, he gets two spaces. Okay, then we have the wolf, who's, I guess, the most confusing character, but he's not that bad. So the way they have it written out in the player aid is a little confusing, but basically he moves one less than the number of cards you played for him um, to a minimum of one. So with one card on the table, he moves one less, but he still has to move one if there are cards played for him. So one card, he would move one space. Two cards, he would also move one space. Three cards, he would move two spaces. And so on. Now, we'll talk about the wolf has a special ability. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, the fox is the simplest. He moves spaces equal to the number of cards that are played for him. So he would move one space per every card. So in this case, he would get one move. Okay, and then we have the lamb or the sheep. Assume that's a lamb. Um, he moves one more than the number of spots or number of cards that are played for him. So he still has to have a card played for him for him to move, but he gets a plus one to that. So with one card played for him, he gets to move two spaces. So he's very fast. However, whenever he walks onto a space that has a stream on it, which there are two of, he has to stop moving. So even if he would get, if he was here on this tile and got a five move, he would move one and stop. He doesn't get to use those extra moves. So that slows him down. And that's how people move. There is one special card and it belongs to the wolf. I think there are three of these in the deck. Yes, there are three of them in the deck. You'll see up in the top corner, there are these howl symbols. These cards still work for the wolf for movement, but they grant the special ability that when one of these, one or more of these is played, nobody but the wolf moves that turn. So not even the tortoise gets to move on that turn. Only the wolf can move. So despite him being slow, he gets that ability that will stifle people from moving. And other people may use that as well to, as some sort of strategy to try and slow down other animals from winning. All right, so that's pretty much it. Once somebody crosses the line, so moves from the end tile here and gets one more move, they go into the highest available podium. And when uh, animals are on the podium, cards of theirs can still be played. So we keep playing the game until there's three animals on the podium. 
But if this was where we were at with uh, the lamb, or yeah, that in first place and the tortoise in second place, cards for the tortoise and the lamb could still be played, and that's just a strategy element you might want to employ. So when you play cards down, you get to, after you've played them, you draw back up to your hand of six. Uh, so there's some strategy to, you know, dumping cards that you don't need. Um, po like playing cards for the guy who's in last place just because you have a handful of his cards and he's not a threat anymore. So it's really interesting how that, how there's some strategy to how you play cards because you won't always be able to play cards for the animals you have bet on. So once three animals get on the podium, we score. So if you are in first place, you get five points. A second place standing gets you three points and a third place standing gets you two points. So you would take a look at the bets that you have and you get points for each of those bets. So in our case here, we, we went double tortoise. So for this card, we get three points for a second place and for this card we get three points for a second place so our total score for the round would be six points so you could stop the game playing right there but typically when we play this game because it's so fast we do what's called the championship mode in the book where you play three full races and you add up your scores every time and you deal out new bet cards every time a race is finished all right, so that's how you play Tortoise and the Hare. Um, I will touch on quickly here, there's a variant for young children. I'll touch on that and then we'll go ahead and get into our review. All right, so there's a variant for uh, younger children to play this game. Uh, it's sort of similar. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of the Howl Wolf cards. And then we need to get the deck down to have 13 of each animal in it. Okay, and once we've done that, we deal out one of these, or two if it's a two-player game, to each player secretly, just like in the other game. And then everybody gets five cards from the deck. They don't pick a second animal to bet on. You only get one animal to bet on. Now, the game comes with these five tokens, which is going to be hard to see, but each token says plus two and has a picture of one of the animals on it. These are turbo tokens. They go on spots two, four six, eight, and ten, randomly. So the gameplay is similar. The way you trigger the racing stage is identical, except that once you trigger it, starting with the start player, you get to, the start player gets to move one animal of their choice, the number of spaces equal to the number of cards they have played. So if there were two tortoise cards out, the player could move the tortoise two. Now, if you land on a space with a turbo token and your movement on a space with a turbo token that matches your animal, that animal gets to move an extra two spots. So there are no special movement abilities at all in this game. The lamb isn't going to be stopped by the stream. The tortoise doesn't move every turn, etc. Okay, and other than that, the game is exactly the same. You tally up score um, identically. Oh wait, so that's how you could play with uh, for beginner players, and I'll go ahead and give me my final thoughts now. Okay, final thoughts for uh, the hare and the tortoise. Uh, I think this is a pretty fun game. Um, it's got what I, I initially thought this was more of a luck-based game, but there's actually a little bit more strategy, still not a whole lot, in, in how you play your cards. And I mentioned it in my or my uh, walkthrough of the game, but there's some strategy, especially in how to get rid of cards in your hand without um, hurting your chances for your animals to win. Because some animals, you're going to end up with a handful of cards for animals that you have no bet on. And then your hand is going to be clogged. So you're going to be playing cards that help other people. Um, but... So it's a, a matter of knowing when to do that and how to do that to mitigate things. And for instance, screwing over the hair by playing four of their cards when they're in first place just to get those cards out of your hand. So 
what I was surprised by in this game is actually how balanced it feels. Uh, I initially thought that the lamb, for instance, would always win. But there's tools like the wolf's howl cards that you can pull out just to stifle people. So I've seen everybody win in first place in this game. Uh, and part of that comes down to if multiple people are betting on the animal, but you don't know if multiple people are. So it's a really fun game, and it's a quick game, and we usually play the three rounds because it's so quick, and I recommend you doing that. Um, so there is the um, easier version of the game. I've never played that. Um, I think pretty young kids could probably handle the, the full game. They might need some help with how different things move, particularly the wolf. Um, but I enjoy this game. Um, but at the same time, it, it's a 6 out of 10 for me, just because I don't always want to play it. And you, if you've seen my videos before, you'll see the pattern. Typically, lighter games I don't give as high a score to, just because I lean towards games that have a little more strategy and depth. But it's still in my collection. I still enjoy it. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, but it's just not enough thinking and a little too random for me to put it up there among my favorite games and games that I always want to play. Um, but the components are pretty cool. I didn't like that you had to put your own stickers on the folks though, because that's a little easy for, you know, goons like me to mess up. But overall, I... I think this is a fun game. I'd recommend it definitely as a family game if you have kids. For me, who's only plays with adults, I guess it's a little iffy. Some people look at me funny when I pull this game out, but hey, it's fun nonetheless. So, 6 out of 10 for me. Recommended definitely as a family game and recommended if you're looking for a light, fun game, but it doesn't have a whole lot of strategy and depth to it. So, anyway, this has been Chris for Cardboard Dragon Reviews. Uh, please go ahead and subscribe and like to my channel. Uh, that helps me out a lot, and until next time, keep your dice on the table.